My sister's 33, by the way, and she's finally figured out what she wants from life. What she wants is she wants a house, she wants a husband, she wants children, she wants a family, and I think that's great. I support her 100%. The problem is that she's single, and she's been single for quite some time, and she can't seem to figure out exactly why she's single. I know why she's single. <laughs> See if you can work it out for yourselves. She will say something along the lines of, all I want is just like a really nice guy, somebody who's just really easy to talk to and who's on my wavelength and who has the same sense of humour as me and who gets me 24-7 and he's got to be good looking and have a nice body but not like goes to the gym every single day and only eats chicken and protein shakes good looking. Like I want somebody that if we were to have a pizza night that he wouldn't have to join CrossFit for a month to work that shit off. And he's got to be adventurous and like going outdoors and doing new things. I've always wanted to go hang gliding and parasailing but if we just wanted to stay in and watch Netflix, then we could just stay in and watch Netflix. And he's got to like the same books and films and arts and music and literature as I do. And he's got to drive a nice car, but not like a dickhead car. Like, like a nice car with sensible miles per gallon that he keeps valeted regularly on the outside and on the inside as well. And he's got to have his own house. If not his own house, then the money saved up towards his own house. So when we want to move in together, we can just move in together and there won't even be any issues. Shoes. and he's got a shampoo and conditioning two separate processes so he's got really smooth silky hair because I like running my fingers through guys hair sometimes and he's got a smell really nice but not like an overpowering smell just like a nice neutral clean sort of smell why can I not find a guy like that <laughs> And I don't have the heart to tell her that the reason she can't find a man like that is because she is a six out of ten at best. <laughs> I mean, perfect people are out there, but perfect people fuck other perfect people. <laughs> They're not going to sully the gene pool with your big nose and your flabby tits. <laughs> a go at six out of tens if you're a six out of ten that's absolutely fine but you gotta know your market girl <laughs> and if you're a six out of ten your market is other six out of tens five out of ten with a good job seven out of ten with low self-esteem <laughs> You know what I mean, that it is a thing, isn't it? You know when you see like a couple in the streets and one of them's like an eight and the other one's like a two? It feels weird, doesn't it? It feels like something's gone wrong. It's almost like you've got to stop yourself from going up to them and going, excuse me, sorry, sorry, sorry. What the fuck is this? <laughs> You're an eight and you're a two. How is that possible? <laughs> and people go, oh, well, he might be a really nice guy. <laughs> he might have a really nice personality. He might be a really nice guy. Yeah, I'd be the nicest guy in the world if I was a two shagging an eight. <laughs> I'd be holding open doors for strangers, helping little old women cross the street with their shopping bags. No need to thank me, madam. I'm fucking an eight. <laughs> That's why I like watching The Undateables so much. <laughs> no, I mean it, because on The Undateables, <coughs> on The Undateables, it's just two people who are looking for love and they don't care about anything else. There's no ego on The Undateables, is there? And I think we as a society could learn a lot from that. I have never once watched an episode of The Undateables where they meet each other for the first time in like a cafe or a restaurant and they sit down across from each other and one of them goes, Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I've got Asperger's, she's a head on a pillow, what the fuck? <laughs>